I never knew that. Oh, probably because I'm never on this side of the camera. Right. Always on this <coughs> side. It's always DJ over. Well, I shouldn't say. <coughs> it's normally, it's normally D me. You. Oh, well, DJ's over there too doing it. So. Okay. Okay. I'll try to bring it up here on my phone. So. Um, it's Monday, the 10th of July. Or, yeah. So, we are back home again. Uh, sorry we didn't get, get posted uh, last week. Um, we were up in Michigan. We uh, actually left early. I shouldn't say early. We left uh, waiting for DJ to get off work on Tuesday. Headed up about halfway. Um, <clears throat> we stopped, stayed overnight. What town was that we stayed overnight in? Do you even remember? Holland. Holland. Holland, Michigan. <clears throat> um, what we did was is we, we went up on the, the Lake Michigan side, which uh, is kind of a unique thing to uh, grape growers on that side of the state. Um, they get what they call the, uh, they're able to grow some basically, what, I'm going to call them California grapes. They're vinifera. Vinifera. Um, did I say it funny? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to call them California grapes. Okay. But uh, basically, they can grow Pinot Noir. Um, what were some of the other ones that they were doing? Uh, Sauvignon Blanc. They, they, there was a little cab around, um, but you saw more Pinot and Sauvignon Blanc. Um, that's mainly what you saw. So. <clears throat> but uh, part of that is, is we asked um, uh, Tim Munger's on tonight too. So we, what we asked him was, is how, how can you do that? Because this is a cold climate area. And he was, uh, um, we went to Mobby. Was it Mobby that was telling mm -hmm. us this? That Which we've heard it before, but yeah. The... Winds come <clears throat> off of the lake. As long They're as they, really close to Lake Michigan. Yeah. So what they do is they get a, a large amount of snowfall. Yeah, he said he'll get 30, 30. Is it feet? I'm not sure. But it was he gets, a lot. It was he, a get, lot. he gets enough. They get enough snowfall <clears throat> up here that it, it literally covers the vines, which yeah. protects them. Yeah. He says the, what was it, back in the early 2000s, they had uh, the polar vortex come up and the lake froze which caused havoc on their vines because they weren't pulling the moisture off of the, the, the lake. And all they got was the cold wind and the cold temperatures. And they lost a lot of the vines due to that yeah. in, that winter. But normally <clears throat> they get enough, like I said, get enough snow um, that it covers the vines. It's kind of like what we've watched this video time and time again. It's wine diamonds. It's on, uh, you can watch it on YouTube. It deals with uh, grapes in the Midwest. Uh, cold hardy grapes. Um, Elmer Swenson was a uh, child or young. His dad used to take the vines loose. He was in Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. And they would drop them, cover them with uh, straw for the winter time. In the spring, they'd come out, pull all that off, raise them back up, hook them back up. And there was a lot of work to it. So that's where he was one of the early pioneers of uh, uh, starting the cold climate grapes. Mm -hmm. The cold climate uh, the hybrids <clears throat> is what they call them. So, but anyhow, back to our trip up there. We stopped. Uh, we were able to uh, get a nice tour at Mobby. Do you want to yep. explain about it? Yeah. So when we started doing sparkling, I wanted, um, there's a tool called um, a disgorger that is kind of like a backwards bottle opener and it this has a cap on it a bottle cap to begin with with yeast in it and you <clears throat> freeze that neck and then you pop it off with this disgorger and it's just easier but I couldn't find one anywhere so I emailed Mobby's they make sparkling that's all they do a little bit they've got another company going now but so <clears throat> I reached out to them and their winemaker at the time, emailed me back. He said, yeah, you can go to blah, blah, blah. And, and so I went there and got the, I ordered it online and got one. And um, so when we were going up to Michigan, I'm like, let's let's uh, stop at Mobby's. And uh, 
sent them a message and said, hey, we're going to be coming up that way. Any chance you'd be around? And they said, yeah, yeah, we will. So <clears throat> I looked it up and it was actually one of the owners. So that was pretty cool to be able to <clears throat> be with one of the owners of Mobby's and they do, they're not a small winery. They do 240,000 bottles a of, year. Of sparkling. Of sparkling. Yeah. Of sparkling. So, yeah, he took us to the production area, and it was incredible how many bottles they had all <coughs> over. And yeah. got to see the area where they had just sparkling sitting, some for years, some for months. <clears throat> it just depended on what it was. Like, this is Sandpiper, so this is kind of their bleed off. Um, well, I was... From... It, it, it's... It's the... When they press it hard, when they press the grapes hard, that's what sandpiper comes from um, in that wine. I can't remember which one. So they don't do much cold climate at all. Um, they do more vinifera there. And yeah, this one doesn't say. But I just, I didn't find a sparkling that I didn't like. No, theirs. and, and for me it was kind of interesting because <clears throat> I'm, I'm not a huge sparkling fan uh, I, most people that know me and when we've talked about it uh, I, I've said this before in the past that it gets too bubbly for me we're drinking one of ours tonight um, this is the angel, wings. angel wings and it's still now is yours still got bubbles coming up yeah and yours has been but open most mine. yeah but about 15 <clears throat> 20 minutes has been open you still got bubbles coming up um, it's not the big bubbles I don't know. There's a way of telling the different sizes of mm them, -hmm. but anyhow, back to uh, Mavi. When we went to their their uh, winery or their tasting area, they came out uh, and they started us out. I think with the sand with sandpiper. Sandpiper. That's what you got right yeah. off the bat. Kind of the California. If you've been to California to taste wines, that's pretty much what you get when you go and you sit down at a tasting and you're in a private tasting at a smaller boutique winery they start you off with a chardonnay well what was good about it for me was is it was kind of a, a tester for for the <clears throat> person waiting on us or or serving us because if we liked them sweeter drier yep. more bubbly less bubbly that was kind of their guide so if this is what you liked um, if you want a little more you could have gone like what you and DJ did or if you want a little less, you kind of went to what my route was. Yeah. Um, we ended up tasting everybody's. We did. We tasted every single yeah. sparkling they had. So. But it was it was good, and it was very interesting to watch how they make it. It's uh, uh, from when they bottle the stuff. They basically they, they do the Charmé method. Do so. Two <clears throat> ways of doing it. Yeah, there there are several ways of doing it. That's the method they use. So they do put the, um, they do have spark. They do have um, the yeast in the bottle, um, and then they go from there. But it's not. It just doesn't have as much bubbles. Yeah. As some might. So and and they do. I don't think they did them all that way. They had different varying methods that they were doing. Yeah. But the, um, it was interesting to see that that uh, you put it in the machine. It cleans the bottle. It gets it ready puts it in and then it goes in one side and comes out corked. Yeah, the, the interesting part was they're like, yeah, every now and then those bottles blow up in there. Yeah. Um, and me coming from manufacturing, that bottle line was just like the bottle lines we had at Rain Rose, just yeah. like them. Well, the way With it's set the, up, yeah, just, rolls in and rolls <clears> around <throat> and pops it down and puts the cork in. And um, I don't think it puts the label on it though. They weren't at the time. They said they didn't because they do they do a ton of private label. Yeah. So it may be they're sparkling and probably sometimes they're probably um, making someone else's, but they put another label on it. Yeah. So they don't, they just don't. And I go, well, it makes sense because who wants to peel labels? Been there, done that. Not, not me. And then they also had <clears throat> this is uh, the two brothers have started another company that's called Big Little, and they're doing some still wine. So this is one of those. This one, we couldn't do a tasting for that one because they weren't open that day, but we bought two one, of them. We, yeah, two. 
but we got two of this. This is a white Pinot and something I've been really wanting to do with um, some of our wine and we'll see about this year. We're just always so tired at harvest that we just don't take the and time it, to do and it. And it may be just as... as but it's, it's, you take that red grape and you press it right away and you end up with a white wine. Yeah. Uh, and that's what they have here. They did tell us we just bottled it, so don't open it. So we'll let that sit a good six months. Um, and then we'll give it, long give it a I try. It, as long as I hide it from you. Sit, I know, because yeah. I almost have it. I go, let's she goes, try it's it open now. Tonight. And I go, and no. Then, they said six months. And then months. we'll do the other one in six months, because no. we bought two. Um, six months in a year. <clears throat> So. And then, and then we got another one that the waitress recommended. Yeah. So it was a red wine. So. But Mobby's wasn't the only place that we ended up going. Um, we went to the one downtown Alpena is what? Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay. And they they had something. While well, we've had their wines and we've been around, they did they do have a canning system that yeah. was interesting. So. Yeah. They were able to make a <clears throat> what a mimosa. No, it was just a sparkling. Sparkling, but, in but there? they had a. Can it on the spot. Yeah. That, which was kind very of, interesting. Nothing we can do at this point, but we could when we have a winery. Yeah. Um, but it was very interesting to watch that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's just the atmosphere in there. It's nice. You can go in and get your wines. You can sit there. Uh, they got these windows that open up front, and you got a, a sitting area that you can watch people walking by. Um, and it was that just, you just wouldn't think of in Michigan. Yeah, because Michigan does, is this was this was downtown. Yeah, downtown Michigan where it was at, or Alpena. Alpena, Michigan, yeah. downtown Alpena. So, but then we got to looking at another one, and this one I found was very very unique. JC uh, and Sue sent us this one and yeah. said, "Hey, here's a new winery in town. And, we haven't even been here." And this one, I'll let you pronounce it so I don't miss. This is Barone, I believe. Um, Barone. Barone. Barone, Barone, I believe. I don't know for sure. We didn't ask Chuck. So again, we got a tour with the owner, um, okay. and they just opened up Memorial Day. Yeah. So hybrid grapes. Um, and what he was, was doing everything that we could do. I didn't think there was anything. No. Well, he's <laughs> in the vineyard. They they're more. Um, how do I want to put? They're able to do things in the vineyard that we aren't because of the climate. Uh, they don't get as hot and muggy up there, so they don't have to deal with the fungus that we do, the powdering probably down. Probably as much. There down, probably you know, times. They don't have the insect <clears throat> pressure that we have here, which surprised me because when we were at uh, uh, Mobby's, they even said that they were starting to see Japanese beetles up north. Hmm. which normally they don't go that far north. So, yeah. The, we Mobby's is in Traverse City. And yeah. Traverse City is across the state from Alpena. Alpena. So, so you're a good you, two hours. Yeah. But uh, so what he was doing at uh, Baroni's um, is he let the grass a little hot. Did I say it wrong again? I, we don't know. No. Maybe Chuck will listen and yeah. he'll, he'll... He can call me and, and <laughs> tell me I'm pronouncing his name wrong. But anyhow... Um, and the grass was a little higher, and what he'll do is he'll leave that grass up there, and then it kind of helps with the, keeping the bugs and stuff away. Plus, um, he sprays once after that. I think he mows it or whatever, and then for the... the He's it, trying to stay very natural. Yes, so but uh, just... we tried all the wines there, um, loved them all. They mm -hmm. were all very, very good, um, but it's, it's kind of... Uh, reminds us of what we're trying to get going if we would ever find land that we could build something. Yeah. Um, but it's just they are still working their they're, regular jobs and yep. doing this. They're exactly like yeah. us. And so Just uh, adding on as they can add on and doing a fantastic job. So, um, But yeah, it's we tasted some of their um, uh, stuff that they had in the barrel. Very good. Um, I liked it. And then they had some sweet wines for my uh, brother-in-law up north that likes sweet mm -hmm. wines. Um, but they had a nice variety, and the tasting area was nice. We were going to sit outside, but then, believe it or not, we got a little shower of rain, so we came back in. But we walked uh, with him. Uh, Chuck, out through the, Chuck took us out to the vineyard. We walked through the vineyard. Um, but it was, it was refreshing 
to see somebody doing something like that that kind of makes us know that, yeah, we're going down the right road, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, if you get up in the <clears throat> Alpena area and that, I would, or in Traverse City area, I would highly recommend both of these places to go see. Yeah, um, so when you, when you sat out at Mobby's, it's just an average place. I mean, it was, there was nothing really showy about it. It was a, you, you sat out on the deck and you just looked out at land and it was just, you know, wildflowers and beautiful land. And, and vines and stuff. You, had and you that went one. off their deck. I'll post some pictures, but you went off their deck and it was all open. So you could roll up the garage doors and yeah. I mean, it was literally garage, but that's what most wineries put in. I mean, walkers have garage doors in their winery. Yeah. And then some of it was um, a vinyl, but that was all open patio. Back but they got, got cool. areas that uh, are cemented that you can sit in. And then they had an area out there where a <clears throat> couple rented, uh, like for uh, just to sit down, if a special occasion type. Oh, yeah. yeah. That they had stuff brought down to them. Completely alone. And, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it was good. But we had, uh, we had a good vacation, except one event. One minor mishap. So we did so. find a really nice golf course that we played up there. We did. I we did. I was so impressed with the fairways and stuff up there. The course was very, very nice. I golf and DJ golf. Yeah, and, and, they, both, and, the, both, and they both played very well. And DJ had so. a caddy. JC was his caddy. Uh, I'm not sure if you'd call that a caddy or a... He was trying really, maybe a little. Yeah. He was trying, so. so, but uh, I know he was trying, but yeah. I think he was... Pushing DJ's buttons the whole time, trying oh, to yeah. pick on DJ the whole That's time. That's what he does. But so. no. Um, but then when you decided to put the jet skis in is when yeah. she had a mishap. She slipped and broke her ankle. So Same leg as Dan. But uh, they assured us that it should be healed up in six weeks. So five more. Five more Down weeks. Week. So hopefully she'll be up and Adam come because that'll put us really close to really harvest. Really close to harvest. So I'll be starting PT. So harvest might look a little bit different, but so um but then we'll get it done. Thanks to uh Julie and Jim Papelka last week. Yeah they helped thank us you, out you. at the Marion Farmers Market. <clears throat> um had a good time out there. Uh met a lot of people. People walked by. Uh, uh sold quite a bit of wine too. So uh we have Des Moines Farmers Market uh this coming Saturday. Uh, we'll be out there. So that one goes from... Is it seven to noon. Seven yeah. to noon. That one's a five-hour yeah. one. Yep. So these I haven't I haven't gone to just because I have my foot down that long and it's, I just... It's, I not, it's it. not good for it or even so. just the ride. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, but it's, it's just it's a case where DJ and I and then uh, Julie was going to check, but uh, and then we've always got... Tony or Michelle, if they're watching, hit them up. I haven't asked yet. But. So, but, uh, yeah. but that's what's going on this weekend. And then the weekend after that, we're up in Dubuque. Mm -hmm. But not only in Dubuque, but we're going to be over at uh, Jones County Fair on Thursday and Saturday night over there. Um, for in case, if you're going to be there at the fair, uh, recommend going up to the, it's, what do they call it, Taste of Tuscany or something? I think it is, yeah. Um, they have a, a tent that's got local wines up there and they got uh, craft beer up there for sale. Um, you can buy it by the glass, the wine you can get by the uh, flights or a glass or a bottle, I think. Yeah. yeah so you can sit around the tent up there and taste some different wines. Um, but if you're going to stop by, you got to stop by before the acts start because once the acts start, the the tent has to shut down so but uh but that's our next three weeks or two weeks yeah three weeks we got des moines dubuque two weeks two weeks two weeks uh the last week we have off so mm -hmm. but uh we are getting closer to harvest uh we got out there the knock on wood uh the grapes are starting to form but then like we've been talking that we got a lot of birds around so we may have to net early this year to try to keep the pesky birds out so, but other than that, um, that's about it. We kind of rambled on tonight, but maybe that makes up for not being on last week. I don't know. Maybe. So. 
<clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. We just didn't have good connection up there where we were at. Um, and I didn't want to go through what we do when we're out at the winery. We're in our backyard, so. Well, I think when we're in the backyard, we have to just shut the Wi-Fi off. Wi-Fi off, yeah. because it's trying to get ours and then everybody yep. else is in the neighborhood. Yep. So, is yours still got bubbles coming up? I can't tell because I drank them also. Yeah, you got oh, some bubbles. Yep, I got bubbles. So, but right. uh, other than that. Well, cheers. Let so. everyone go. Have a great week, and we'll uh, see you next Monday. Uh, I could ask you to hop up and shut it off. They don't want to see that. Oh. So what do I hit? Finished?